Hello everyone! Last time I gave you a problem about a combination lock that uses the digits 0 to 9 and it accepts a 4 digit combination. And I asked you if you wanted to crack the lock, what was the shortest sequence of numbers that you would have to enter that contained every possible 4 digit combination. Now, we're going to find the solution to this problem. These sort of sequences are called de Brown sequences. This is named after a Dutch mathematician, Nicolas de Brown. Uh, I'm trying to do the Dutch pronunciation. I'm sure I'm getting that wrong. If I am, I will be corrected. Of that, I have no doubt. Uh, these are used, in fact, in lots of places. They're used in computing, uh, robotics, DNA sequencing even. Uh, they, they chop up the DNA and then they, they fit the sequence together again using this sort of principle. There's even a card trick that uses this principle, which maybe I'll show you sometime. Now, we're going to try and do this. I'm going to show you three ways to solve this sort of problem. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this is not going to be the easiest video I've ever made. There's going to be some new ideas in it, some new words. I'm going to explain them as I go along. So if you're with me, come on, let's do it. Let's start with an easy example. Last time I showed you that the sequence 11221 contains every possible uh, two-digit combination of the numbers 1 and 2. So how would I make a sequence like this? So one way you could do it is to write out all the combinations that you're interested in. So if I write out all the two-digit combinations of 1 and 2, uh, so for example, uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2 and 2, 1. Now I'm going to join these combinations together with an arrow if I can add a digit to the end of a combination and it overlaps with another one. For example, if I added a 2 onto the end of the combination 1, 1, it will be 1, 1, 2, which overlaps with 1, 2. I'm going to join them together with an arrow. There we go. On the other hand, if I started at 1, 1 and I added a 1 to the end, I would get 1, 1, 1, which actually overlaps with itself. It overlaps, it goes round back to 1, 1. So continuing in this way, you get a diagram called a graph. Now all you have to do is find a path that visits every node of the graph exactly once. So starting at 1, 1, I get 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, and 2, 1. Visiting every node exactly once is called a Hamilton path. Now another way to do this is to not write out all the two-digit combinations, but to actually write out all the combinations uh, of length one less than that, which is in this case combinations of length one, which in fact is just the numbers one and two. Now, we do the same sort of idea. We join them together with an arrow if we can add a digit to the end and the two combinations overlap. So if I start at 1 and I add a 2 to the end, I would get 1, 2, which overlaps with the combination 2. So I'm going to join that together with an arrow. If I started at 1 and I added a 1 to the end, I would get 1, 1, which actually loops back to itself. So I'll do that as well. And if you continue again in this way, you're going to get another diagram uh, like this. This time, I want to find the path that visits every edge exactly once. So starting at 1, you'd get 1, 1, 2, 2, 1. And you visited every edge exactly once. And this sort of path is called an Euler path. So if you want all the combinations of length n, you can either write out all the combinations of length n and find the Hamilton path, or you write out all the combinations of length n minus 1 and find the Euler path. So let's try and do a harder one. This time I'm going to use the Euler path method to find a sequence that contains all three digit combinations of the numbers 1, 2 and 3. And if you do that, you'll get a graph that looks like this. And look at that, isn't that a beautiful thing? It contains all the combinations of length 1 less than 3. So it's all the combinations of length 2. And we want to find a path that uses every edge exactly once. Here's one such sequence. It starts at 1, 1. And then it continues. So it goes 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 1, and so on. In fact, these paths are cycles. They end up back where they started. 
so you don't even need the last few digits. You can think of these sequences as wrapping round. So the number of de Brown sequences is equal to the number of Euler cycles. In this case, we have 373,248 solutions. Now that sounds like a lot, but that's out of about 8.5 billion ways you could write a sequence using the same digits. Now that graph method is pretty close to what some of you were describing in the YouTube comments. Uh, some of you were talking about writing out the combinations uh, so that they overlapped with each other and crossing them off as you went along. And I had about 40 entries for this particular problem and I think about half of them were right. I can tell you some of the winners, um, well certainly some of them are pronounceable ones. Uh, every video 123, got it right. Uh, Gamma Who X, got it right. Kit Kat Chunky, 93, nice name, got it right. Uh, Whoopa, got it right. Uh, Happy Memory XD, which I think is a emoticon, so it's Happy Memory, so got it right. Uh, and uh, Fish Pizza, 1212, got it right, daft name, you should get a proper name like I have. And Mr. Curran's third hour discrete maths class, uh, got it right. But does Mr. Curran know that you're watching YouTube videos when you should be doing your homework? In general, if you were interested in finding all the combinations of length n using k digits, well there are k to the power n such combinations. And every digit of our de Brown sequence is the start of a new combination. So if it's a sequence that wraps round, it has length k to the power n. Now if we were interested in finding how many Euler paths there were for that graph, that's equal to the number of solutions to this problem. And that is equal to this horrible thing. It's k factorial to the power k to the power n minus 1 divided by k to the power n. Yeah, it is a horrible thing, but that formula is the one that I use to find the total number of ways uh, to find solutions for three-digit combinations using the numbers 1, 2, and 3, which was 378,248. Now, if you want to do a harder problem, like, for example, how many four-digit combinations uh, using the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4, then that graph is going to get pretty ugly. So mathematicians have come up with an efficient algorithm to do it instead. I'm going to show you how that works. So this algorithm I'm going to explain to you now, it's probably going to be pretty new to you, but we're going to use it to solve this problem of finding a sequence that contains all our four-digit combinations using the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the first thing that we do is we list all the combinations of length 4. But not only that, we also list all the combinations of length that divide 4. So it's the combinations of length 2 and combinations of length 1. Uh, but we don't include combinations of length 3 because that doesn't divide 4. In general, what you do is you make a list of all the combinations of length n and all the combinations of length that divide n. Now we're going to order these combinations in something called lexicographic order. That's a fancy word for something you already know. That's the same order they would use if you were ordering words in a dictionary. So it's dictionary order. So although these aren't words, they're in dictionary order. So A comes before AA, -A, which comes before AAAA, -A -A -A, which comes before AAAB -A -A and AAAC -A 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 and so on. So that comes before ABAA -A -A and ABAB -A -A and comes before B and it comes before BA and, and, and so on. It's dictionary order. So we're going to list our combinations using this and then we're going to start to cross them off. First of all, we cross off all the combinations that are periodic. So 1, 1 would get crossed off and 1, 1, 1, 1 would get crossed off. These are periodic. And combination 1, 2, 1, 2 gets crossed off. That's periodic. The idea is if you rotate the combination and you get something that you already had, then you cross it off. You also cross off combinations that, if you rotate them, they already appear earlier on in the list. So you would cross off 1, 2, 1, 1, because if you rotate it, you would get 1, 1, 1, 2, and that's already appeared earlier on in the list. You cross off 2, 1, 1, 1 for the same reason. 
Now, you string all those combinations together, and that's it, that's your solution. That is the sequence that contains all the four digit combinations of the numbers one, two, three, and four. You can do it, and you can do it yourself. Maybe you want to try it out. Now, if we go back to our original problem of solving a sequence that contains all the four digit combinations using digits zero to nine, now that sequence has length 10,000. Now, only a crazy person would attempt to write out that sequence. And I've done it here. This is my notepad, the notepad of a madman, and you can see I did actually write out the entire sequence. I tell you what, I'm not going to read it out to you. Um, what we'll do, we'll end the video and I'll let it scroll past. It's going to take about a minute to scroll past, uh, so while it does, you can enjoy the royalty-free music. And for now, if you have been, thanks for watching.